Well, it's Wednesday all day long. We've been working on the packet question number year 2004. And so let's go through and just kind of look and see what you guys got for this. So this one should be an easy one point right here, easy money, low lying fruit, cookies on the bottom shelf as they say. All right, easy to get to. So write the equilibrium constant expression. So KSP is going to equal what? Okay, and again, this is the that's the equilibrium we talked about we're gonna do in the lab on Tuesday. That's gonna be our indicator. That silver chromate is the red precipitate that's gonna form. Okay? But it's it's gonna form after the silver chloride. Now, calculate the concentration in moles per liter. So this is given the KSP. What's the molar concentration? I can't remember if that was problem one or two type that we for KSP, but it's one of those first two types. Okay, so what do we do? We know KSP is 2.6 times 10 to the minus 12. What's that gonna equal? 2x squared. 2x squared times x. Now it's important, make sure you put the square on the outside because the two's gotta be squared as well, okay? So it's 2x squared. So that's going to equal 4x cubed. So x is going to equal my chromate, which is also equal to my silver chromate, which is what the question's asking for, is equal to what? What do we get? Uh, 8.7 times 10 to the minus 5 mole. Do we agree with that? Yes. Isn't it asking for AG? Oh, that's just asked for, okay. Very important. <laughs> Very important. Read the question. <laughs> Read the question. Okay, because I knew exactly how to solve this problem, right? But I don't get points because I didn't ask to answer the question. So, Given all of this, that's nice, and we're going to need this value for the next one, but the silver concentration is going to be what? Two times that. Not squared. No, the concentration is just X. Oh, right. The concentration squared for the KSP. <laughs> This is the concentration on the inside. So that's going to equal 17.4, so 1.74 times 10 to the minus fourth molar Ag plus. That's the answer to this question. Okay? So, now, Calculate the maximum mass in grams that can dissolve in 100 milliliters. So this is what I was talking about yesterday, going from moles per liter to grams per 100 milliliters. It's a very common question. And so we can simply take the molarity, 8.7 times 10 to the minus 5, and that's moles per liter, okay? So I need to change that to how much is in 100 milliliters. So if I just change this, so I can say what? For every liter, there's a thousand milliliters. Say what? Can you convert it to liters? Convert it to milliliters, okay. So I need to say one liter over a thousand milliliters. That's going to give me per milliliter, okay? But that's going to give me moles. I want what? So how do I get to grams? Mole ratio. Not mole ratio. Molar mass of silver chromate. Okay, we're always going to moles to grams. It's going to be the molar mass. Okay. So what is the molar mass of silver chromate? Two thirty-one or three thirty-one. 
Okay, so <laughs> moles is on top, so I'm going to say 331.74 grams over one mole. And that's going to give me grams per one milliliter. Okay, when I divide that in by a thousand. Okay, so I need to go times 100 milliliters. And that's going to give me how much? 2.8. Now, I have a question mathematically. If we just did 8.7 times 10 to the minus 5 moles, and I just put in 0.1 liters, and then went times my 331.74 grams per mole, what does that come out to? Does it come out to the same thing? It comes out the same thing? Yeah. I thought it did. Okay, so this is how I would do it. So when you divide this by this times this, does it come out to this number? Uh, it's off by, uh, by a couple zeros. So it's off by 100. Uh, yeah. So this is coming out to grams per milliliter as well. Okay. Your way, it comes out to 0 0.2886. Oh, that's 0. what? 2886. Oh, sorry, 2. So it's off by 100, yeah. Wait, so if you. 100 divided by 1,000 is 0.1. So why would it work? Because I'm multiplying, and I'm dividing by 0.1 instead of multiplying by 0.1. So instead we do one liter and then we can just say times 0.1 over or we can only just say 100 milliliters over a liter per liter, I don't know. Let's just do it this way. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay? It's just a conversion factor, though. It's just converting moles per liter to grams per 100 milliliter. So just let units be your guide on that. Now, a 0.1 mole sample of silver nitrate is added to the silver chromate. So what type of problem is D? Common ion problem. Okay? So in the common ion problem now, we're going to know which one is being added? Silver is being added. And it's nice that it's in one liter. So I'm going to be adding this one. So now it's going to say 2.6 times 10 to the minus 12 is going to equal 2x plus 0.1 squared times x. But what do we, what, what do we get to do? We assume x is negligible. Again, because of sig figs, the value of x is going to be so small that 2x plus 0.1 is still pretty much going to equal 0.1 to 3 sig figs. Okay? So, you just plug all that in so we can assume x is negligible. Now, you need to write assume x is negligible. Don't just cross it out. you got to give an explanation why you're crossing it out. So, it's going to be 2.6 times 10 to the minus 12 divided by... 0 0.01, okay, and that's going to be equal to x, which is going to be my chromate concentration. And what's this question asking for? Actually, it only asks for increase, decrease, okay, but let's just go and see what it comes out to. Ten to the what? Okay, so it was 8.7 times 10 to the minus 5 in pure water, and now it's 10 to the minus 10. But the reality is, is that adding a common ion, all 
always lowers the solubility. So you would just have to say, this one really is more of a thought question than a math question, okay? You justify your answer, you say the chromate's going to decrease because adding the common ion of silver will always lower the overall solubility because this times this cannot exceed that. So as this goes up from a second source, this has to go down, which is coming from there. Okay? The common ion always lowers the solubility. All right. So that's all they throw in, you know, common ion problem, the conversion problem, just the simple KSP equation into all of that. Now they're going to continue asking questions about all the different types of KSP. I really want to get the last one, G. Okay, once again, easy money, low-lying fruit. Write the balanced equation for dissolving. Well, hopefully we all know it's going to be Ag3PO4. And you don't have to have states on there, but what's that going to go to? Now, y'all be sure you're putting the charges on those ions. Don't just put Ag and PO4. You do not get credit if you put Ag and PO4. The silver does not dissolve in water. The silver ion dissolves in water. Okay? Calculate the value of KSP. So they give me this right here. That's my silver. Okay? So I know that KSP, I'm going to go over here, is equal to Ag plus what? Cubed. So what do I know? Ag plus. Now do I cube this number before I put it in there? No, because this is the concentration that goes in here. It's concentration cubed. Okay? This is the concentration so it's going to equal 5.3 times 10 to the minus fifth cubed. And what do we use for phosphate? One third. Because for every three, where is it? Every three of these, we only get one of those. So if this concentration is 5.3, this is going to be 5.3 divided by three, which is 1.4333. 1.7, I was close. So then multiply that out. KSP turns to equal. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of people erasing and writing. Where did we go wrong on this one? The cube root. What do we get? Negative 18? Mm -hmm. What was the first part? 2.7. Okay, pretty small number. Now, I love this question. So, we're going to go from 1 liter to 500 milliliters. Water is going to evaporate off. So what's going to happen to the concentration of these ions as the water evaporates off? They're going to go up, right? They can't exceed this number. This times this can't exceed the KSP. So if this is going up and this is going up, as the water evaporates, now all of a sudden, it's greater than KSP, so what's going to happen? Which, which way is the reaction going to have to go? It's going to go this way because, and it makes sense, if you evaporate water off, some of it's going to precipitate out. There's not as much room at the end, so to speak, for the ions all to be hanging out. Right? So it's going to force it this way. Well, when is it going to stop moving this way? 
when it gets back to KSP, in other words, when it gets back to the original concentration. Because a saturated solution is going to have the same concentration, whether you have a cup of it, a gallon of it, or an ocean of it. If it's saturated, it has the same ratio of moles per liter. We're decreasing the number of liters it's in, so we're going to decrease the number of moles <coughs> dissolved proportionally. But the concentration stays the same. The exact same thing would happen in reverse if we went from 500 milliliters to a liter. If I dilute it, these are going to go down. So the reaction is then going to have to shift to the right to make these come back up until they get back to the concentration they were before, which is saturated. Does that make sense? They ask that question a lot. It's a good one to know. We good with all that? Any questions on this? This has a common ion problem. It's calculate KSP from concentration. This is con calculate concentration from KSP. So we have one, two, and three type problems here. We don't have will it precipitate form or which will precipitate first, but we have all the other types and everything in between asking about KSP. So what exactly is the answer to It's going to remain the same. Because as the water evaporates, more ions will precipitate out, keeping the concentration the same. Look at year 2019. You don't have it in your packet. This is last year, or this was the last normal year's test. Okay. But you can go to Cal, uh, uh, to class down and um, do AP Central and see this question. I just kind of want to go through it theoretically. So you got bromine and chlorine can react to form BrCl. The boiling point of bromine is 332, whereas the boiling point of BrCl is 278. Explain the difference in terms of intermolecular forces. So obviously, the 332, what does that mean about the IMFs compared to two? 78. They're stronger. They're stronger. What's the only type of IMF with bromine? LDFs. But BRCL might have slight dipole dipole. So why is it less? Okay, because the LDFs of BR2 are going to be greater than the combined LDFs and dipole dipole here because bromine's electron cloud is larger than chlorine's. Okay, that's a flashback to the past. So that's just kind of how they can throw in different concepts into the same question. Okay, so again, we don't have an equilibrium or KSP problem, we have a chemistry problem. We just got to keep an open mind on everything. Now they did give you a hint. I mean, they helped you to know where to go with this with that. Okay, so then they give you this with delta H, okay? Since it's positive, where does heat go? Okay, I think I heard a lot of Okay, <laughs> I think I heard reactants, all right? I hate these masks. I'm so ready to see y'all's faces and hear your voices. I just pray this vaccine just kind of, if we get wiped, we get back to just normal. I'll take that out. School year. Yeah, probably not, but you know, there's still hopefully light at the end of the tunnel. That's not an oncoming train. You think next year will be different? Yes. I'm just believing in a positive world. I got nine more years to go. I don't want to be nine years in a mask. <laughs> All right. 
So here we have this, calculate the pressure in the container before equilibrium is established. So what are we going to do here? You got moles, you got volume, you got temperature, PV equals NRT, right? And you even already have moles, so that's easy. So P equals NRT over V. Piece of cake. Again, easy money point. Write the expression for the equilibrium decomposition. Well, we know how to write that, okay? So they what they said KEQ, so it doesn't really matter whether it's KC or KP, okay? Do they give it, the, since they give us kind of this information, moles and liters, I would do it in terms of KC. So I'd just say KEQ is equal to the concentration of Br2 times Cl2 all over BrCl squared. After the system has reached equilibrium, 42%. So this is your percent, right? So I'm going to start with uh, BRCL going to BR2 plus CL2. Okay? So I'm starting with 0.1 mole over 2 liters is my initial, zero and zero. What am I gonna get? What's my change gonna be? So obviously this is 0 0.05, right? Is it gonna be 0 0.05 minus two, or minus two X, but what's X gonna be? The 42%, right? So I'm gonna say, 0 0.05, well, I'm do it down here by the change. 0 0.05 times 0 0.42, what's that going to come out to? 0 0.021? 0 0.0021? 0 0 0 0.021. Minus 0 0.021. Okay, well, yeah, because that's how much reacted. But that's my 2x. So how much of this am I going to get? Zero. Okay, so that's the tricky part of this one. This is the 2x. So it's minus 2x plus x plus x. But we know what x is going to be because 42% is going to react. This is that second type of KEQ problem that we talked about, or actually, it's the third type. Okay, so now we have an equilibrium, 0 0.05 minus 0 0.021, 0 0.029, 0 0.0105, 0 0.0105. 0 .0105. So, so what I'm calculating KEQ. So the only tricky part on this is, again, if this is minus 2x, you've got to realize what are we letting x equal, what are we letting, you know, what's, what's the relationship here, 2 to 1? If this much reacts, only half a mile of that is going to form. Yeah. Oh, we got, sorry. Well, it's that squared and this squared. So, trying to go too fast. I got 0 0.131. 0 0.131? Does somebody agree with that number? Okay. So, not a super hard problem. This is, again, this is 2019. Last year's test was where there was two questions, all digital, and, uh, you know, I can't really even access. All the questions were different for different people. Um, and so... But this year is going to be back to a normal paper test. It's going to be in this format. Okay? Now, notice here on G. Calculate the bond energy of the BRCL bond 
using delta H of 1.6 and the information. So I see bond energy. Again, a flashback. So now I have uh, an IMF question, I have a thermo question, and I have an equilibrium question all tied into one question. Okay? Now this is considered a long question. We didn't even get A and B up at the top because it wasn't relating to equilibrium. So on your test, you have three long questions. Okay, notice it goes all the way to G. This is going to be a, um, the long questions are 10 points each. So one, two, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G is seven. So a couple of these will be like, this probably is a two pointer. Most of these are probably all one point, okay? So what do I do? Bond energy, what equation come, has to come to mind? Yes. Delta H is equal to the sum of bonds broken, bond energy is broken, minus the sum of bonds formed. Okay? So I know delta H is 1.6 is equal to bonds broken. Well, I only have to break the BRCL. That's what I'm looking for, but there's how many of these are there going to be? Two. two. So it's going to be 2x minus bonds formed, 1 and 1, 193 plus 243. So Solving all of that, what is x equal? 418, we'll say 419. 219. 219. And that's going to be kilojoules per mole. Okay? So again, not a hard problem if you just remember bonds broken minus bonds formed. And remember the two that you got to break two of. All right. That's a real current problem. I'm, I'm just I can't help myself. Let's just go look. I'm not, we're not going to do A and B, but let's just see what A and B. This is a KSP problem. Calculate the number of grams that dissolve in 100 milliliters of a saturated solution of MgOH2. They give you KSP. Let's, let's not do this. Let's just talk about how we would do this. How do we do? What do we have to do for this one? What's probably a good first thing to do? Set up the equation. That's a very good place to start. And that's going to go to? Plus 2OH minus. And just put. So I know KSP is going to equal 1.8 times 10 to the minus 11. It's going to equal what? So we already know all that. So what do I plug in here? Um, 
X and two X. X and two X. So it's just going to be four X cubed, and then you solve for it. And it's asking for the molar side. Uh, then we have to take it from moles per liter to the grams per 100 milliliters, just like we did on that previous problem. Okay. But notice how this is 18. This is current. They like to ask that you need to know how to do that conversion. Okay. So since I'm kind of stressing that, what do you think that means for your test next Wednesday? You probably need to know that conversion. Okay. So put a star by it. You know, say, must know. I'm not even implying. I'm not even hinting. I'm direct messaging. I'm trying to put it in y'all's language. I'm DMing you. <laughs> All right. This is, this is the short question. This is a four-point question. That one's probably two. This one's going to be two. The energy required to separate the ions, crystal lattice, into individual ions as represented by the table known as, known as the lattice energy. Now, we already knew that. It's kind of insulting that they had to define lattice energy for us, but um, not everybody's lucky enough to come to Spain Park. All right? So we know what lattice energy is, the energy needed to break these ions apart. As shown in the table, the lattice energy of SROH2 is less than the lattice energy of MgOH2. Explain in terms of properties and they even give you the clue, Coulomb's law. What are the two factors in Coulomb's Law? Size, Size and charges. product of the charges. What do we know about product of the charges? It's the same. So why is strontium's less? Because it's, it's bigger. Therefore, the ions are farther apart. They're less tightly held. It takes less energy to break one part. Okay? Coulomb's Law. <laughs> Now, not for my test on Wednesday, but for the AP test, must know. Going for It's going to be asked. One more. I'm just kind of going back through the years, letting you see what type of questions get asked. This is 2016. This is the one... Look at your value of K. What does this tell me? It's product favor. It's product favor. Remember the problem we did yesterday, the K was 2400. This is, that's 10 to the third. This is 10 to the seventh. So what do we assume? That it goes to completion. It goes to completion. And that's what everybody missed on this one, as you tried to do it like an equilibrium. Okay, the polyatomic ion, and it, plus they give you this thing that we've never seen before. <laughs> okay? If you guys look, you'll see EDTA, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid is what that stands for. Okay? That's why they call it EDTA. It's just used as a preservative a lot. Okay? It's commonly abbreviated uh, EDTA. The ion can be formed complexes. All that's nice. The complex forms in the equation above. All of that is just extra. A 50 milliliter volume of a solution that has EDTA concentration of 0.3 is mixed with 50 milliliters of 0.2 molar to produce 100 milliliters of solution. Considering the value of K, determine the concentration in the 100 milliliters of solution. This is just the limiting reactant solution stoichiometry problem. Because considering the value of K, means it goes to completion. So you just do a stoichiometry problem. You don't do an equilibrium problem. And then here, the solution is diluted with distilled water to a volume of one liter. After equilibrium has been reestablished, is the number of moles of barium present in the solution greater than or equal to the number of moles of barium present in the original solution before it was diluted? Well, this time it's asking for moles. If I dilute this, what, which way is the reaction going to go? Oh. Actually, this is a really good question. Okay. Here's something about Le Chatelier's principle, and I was going to wait until we did the lab tomorrow to introduce this concept. I thought this was just going to be the opposite of 
when I first read it, the opposite of the, the evaporation. Le Chatelier's principle says that when uh, all solutions are aqueous, when you dilute, the reaction shifts to the side with more moles. Because you have all of a sudden, it's like, it's like increasing the volume, you want more moles of gas, when you increase the amount of water, you want more moles of ions to fill that space. So by adding water to this, it's going to actually push the equilibrium to the left and cause more barium to actually dissolve. Now the concentration will end up going back to where it was, but it's going to go this way because it's going to produce more moles. So barium is going to increase. So th this question was highly, highly missed up here because no one knew how to do this one because the K thing and then this question just threw everybody for the loop because that's a very little known fact. I didn't learn this fact until probably four or five years ago. And maybe on this, this, this might have been the question that made me have to learn. Okay, all right. The rest of the period, what time we get out of here? 35, so we've got 20 minutes. Let's do 2013. It's on, the, it's on this side right here. Let's go ahead and do 2013. Then tomorrow we're going to do a lab. Friday we'll go over this one and then we can just do some more of the packet practice problems on Friday. I just want you guys to do tons and tons of these. Just you'll probably get sick of them, but hopefully it'll you know just become second nature on how to do them. Okay. Monday, I'm not sure what Monday is going to hold. We'll, we'll do a, maybe we'll do the lab on Monday. I'll let you know on Friday. Maybe we'll do the lab on Monday. Possibly have the test on Tuesday instead of Wednesday. Um, uh, we'll see. Okay. All right. So let's do 2013 for the remaining time. Yeah. Go Jags.